Time for my week two NFL predictions. You're watching the MJ Take on Sports Fan Entertainment. Hello and welcome to the MJ Take on Sports Fan Entertainment. NFL Week Two is here, and it is time for my NFL Week Two picks and predictions last week i went 10 and 6 okay not great not bad i always shoot for 11 and 5 in games or sorry in weeks where there are 16 games but we got 10 and 6 and i'm just okay with that and then against the spread i believe i was 6 8 and 2 or something like that so we gotta uh, you know do better on that but as i always said i'm not great against the spread i'm good at picking like three or four or five games against the spread but 16 games i'm not great with that but with that said let's just talk about week two and again we have the sfe picks challenge the link and the password to that can be found down in the description box below this allows you to go up against me in picks and right now, we have three people with 14 uh, points right now. 14 and 2. Three people went last week. We have Dizzy Penguin, EMTZ, and The Dark Knight. Those three are leading the SFE Pick Challenge. Remember, if you finish in the top three by the end of the season, you will receive a prize from me. So with that said, let's talk about week two of the NFL season. And let's start with the Thursday night football game. The New York Jets travel to Buffalo and face the Buffalo Bills. And I'm actually quite surprised at how many people are picking the Jets to win this game. Remember, the Bills swept the Jets last year. And we're looking at two teams that are pretty much the exact same teams they were last year. They didn't add much. They didn't lose much over the past year. The Bills just kind of have the Jets number. I mean, right now the Jets, like, what they do offensively is they rely on their two receivers, Eric Decker and Brandon Marshall, to make plays. But the Bills' best positional group is their cornerbacks. They have Ronald Darby and they have Stephon Gilmore, and they slow down these Jets wide receivers, and the Jets really have a hard time scoring on the Bills. And also you have the Rex Ryan factor as well. I like the Bills to win on Thursday Night Football. I really do. We move on to the Cincinnati Bengals at the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, Bengals fans are, and the whole Bengals team is not getting much respect. I think they should be getting a little bit more respect, but with that said, I'm picking the Steelers to win this game. You know, you just have to pick the Steelers to win this game, but when it comes to whether or not it's be close I think this is going to be very close I think this is going to be an AFC North battle and it would not shock me in the least if the Bengals came out and won this football game straight up we move on to the Baltimore Ravens at the Cleveland Browns and again you know I think that an AFC North team here is not getting enough respect yeah the Browns you know they went to Philly last week and they stunk and they're horrible and RG3 is injured but first of all I think Josh McCown is better than RG3 I thought he should have been the harder week one for the Cleveland Browns, I thought they were just starting RG3 in hopes that he could stay healthy, and that was ridiculous to me. I think Josh McCown's just a better quarterback, smarter quarterback. I mean, go look at his stat line the past couple years. It hasn't been that bad. We need to stop hating on Josh McCown. So with that said, I think the Browns are going to compete, and I think it's going to be close. I have the Ravens winning here, but again, I think it's going to be close. We move on to the Dallas Cowboys at the Washington Redskins. You know, Cowboy fans think that I hate their football team, that I'm against their football team. Look, let me tell you this, okay? I have no hatred for the Dallas Cowboys, and I'm about to prove it right now because I'm picking the Cowboys to win this game. The Cowboys right now, they're trying to run the football, and they're trying to control the clock, trying to control time of possession. This is going to work against the Redskins. Redskins gave up 143 rushing yards to D'Angelo Williams last week. Man, the Cowboys can get that out of Ezekiel Elliott and Alfred Morris. And, oh, they also have a mobile quarterback in Dak Prescott. The Steelers didn't even have that. So, I think the Cowboys run all over the Washington Redskins run defense, which continues to be porous. And they control time of possession. And they leave Washington with a victory here. I the Cowboys going to Washington in winning in Week 2. We move on to the Tennessee Titans at the Detroit Lions. And sorry, Titans fans, but this is another loss for this football team. I think the Lions are just a better football team from top to bottom than the Tennessee Titans right now. And the only positions where the Titans are better is running back and tight end to me. Not even quarterback. I think mean, the quarterbacks are close, but I give the edge to Stafford right now. In the future, yeah, Mariota, but right now, I give the edge to Stafford. So I think the Lions have a better quarterback. I think the Lions have a better team. They have Ezekiel Anza and a bunch of other big players. Titans don't have these type of players. Lions win pretty easily to me in Detroit. Titans start out 0-2. 
Oh, here we go again. We move on to the Kansas City Chiefs at the Houston Texans. And, you know, a lot of people are expecting the Chiefs to win this game. They had great success against the Houston Texans last year. And, you know, early in the video, I talked about the Bills' success against the Jets last year and why that influenced my pick there. But this is different. Okay, the Houston Texans, they're not the same Houston Texans that they were last year. They have a new quarterback. They have a new running back. They have a new wide receiver, a couple wide receivers that are new. This is a different football team. They also have to Davian Clowney healthy right now. Their outside linebackers are playing out of their minds. Whitney Merciless, Jadavian Clowney, John Simon, J.J. Watt is still on the defensive line. This Texans team is dangerous right now. And to me right now, the Chiefs, their offensive weaponry, it's not that impressive. One wide receiver in Jeremy Macklin, that's very scary. He can be shut down by Jonathan Joseph. And then from there, you know, you're talking about Spencer Ware being able to move the football extensively. I'm not buying into that. I think the Texans win this, and I think it could be pretty easily. I like the Texans to win this game in Houston. We move on to the Miami Dolphins at the New England Patriots. The Dolphins impressed me last week. I understand they only put up 10 points, but when I watched the film, Ryan Denhill didn't look too bad, honestly. So, I think the Dolphins can compete in New England without Tom Brady, without Rob Gronkowski, probably yet again. Um, I think the Patriots win this game, okay? It's clear that the Patriots will probably win this game, but I think the Dolphins will compete at the end of the day. We move on to the New Orleans Saints at the New York Giants. And, you know, this is a tough game to me, a little bit in terms of Drew Brees is dangerous. I mean, the guy is still throwing for over 400 yards. I think he's probably going to finish over 5,000 yards by season's end. Uh, but the problem is right now, the Saints defense stinks. And they just lost their best cornerback, Kevin Bro will be out for the next six weeks, and that stinks. You know, you just can't pick the Saints to go to New York and win right now. But again, I think this is going to be close, but I had to pick the Giants to put, an, put up enough points on the New Orleans Saints to win this football game. We move on to the San Francisco 49ers at the Carolina Panthers. You know, I have some dumb 49er fans commenting on my videos lately saying, hey, you were wrong about us. What are you talking about, you idiots? I had you guys winning this football game, and I still have you guys going 2-14. and 14. Look, the defense looked good, but the offense looked a little fraudulent, looked a little college-like, and I'm not sure how sustainable this offense is going to be, and when I go through the schedule, I don't see wins on the schedule. So I think this is when you start to realize, oh, snap, we kind of suck. Okay, and it's going to start with this game. The Panthers want to bounce back. They're going to bounce back. They're still the favorite to win the NFC South to me, although the Bucks will compete. I have the Panthers winning this game pretty easily. We move on to the Seattle Seahawks at the Los Angeles Rams. And the LA Rams stunk on Monday Night Football. Again, to no surprise for me, I mean, the Rams stink. I don't know why everyone didn't see this. All you had to do was pull up the roster on ESPN or on Rams.com or whatever, look and see, oh, Case Keenum, Tavon Austin, and Kenny Britt are starting Wow, this team stinks. And then you would have saw you would have seen this coming. You know, to me, the Rams are horrible. But with that said, the Seattle Seahawks, for some reason, they just like playing these games close, especially in the division, especially to the Rams. They've lost to the Rams the past couple years. I don't know why. I think they finally beat the Rams in L.A., but with that said, it would not surprise me if this game is close yet again. But again, I have the Seahawks winning this game. We move on to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Arizona Cardinals, and the Cardinals are my Super Bowl team. They're my Super Bowl predicting team, and I need to see them take a step forward offensively right now. I they should be blowing teams out, to be quite honest with you. They're the most talented roster in the NFL. I don't think it's very close. Um, so I expect them to rebound, but I think the Bucks are dangerous right now. I think Jameis Winston is very dangerous right now. I think he's definitely solidifying himself as a top 10 quarterback, as I predicted before the season, by the way. And, man, they're going to compete with this uh, with this team, and they may end up winning this game. But I have the Cardinals winning this game. You just have to fit the Cardinals in this situation. We move on to the Atlanta Falcons at the Oakland Raiders. And right now we have a big problem if you're Atlanta. You guys can't get a pass rush. You haven't been able to get a pass rush for the past three or four years, and I think it's the worst it's ever been, and that is shocking to say. You know, with that in mind, you're going up against a Raiders team that, man, they pass protect. I think the Raiders have the second best offensive line in the league. So Derek Carr is just going to be sitting in that pocket. Uh, pocket. And, man, let me tell you, he's going to pick you guys apart offensively. It's going to be bad. And they're going to put up a lot of points to me. I have the Raiders winning this one. I don't think it's going to be very close either. We move on to the Indianapolis Colts at the Denver Broncos. And let me tell you something right now. 
I hate the Colts, you know, deep in my heart because I'm a Titans fan. I hate Andrew Luck. But, man, these boys compete, okay? Their defense has been bad for years. The offensive line, it's good, okay? I don't know why people love to talk about the offensive line of the Colts and say, oh, it stinks, Andrew Luck can't get production. What are you guys talking about? He was on pace to get sacked 32 times last year. Boo-hoo. Ryan Tannehill got sacked 58 times in 2014. I didn't hear anyone complaining about anything, okay? 32 sacks in a season, that's not bad. Two times a game, who cares? Your offensive line is actually pretty good, and stop using that as an excuse to defend Andrew Luck. But anyway, they like to compete, and they like to finish close. They may lose games, but they usually lose close. I like the Colts to compete in this game. They may win this game. I think Andrew Luck could easily go to Denver and win. He's done it before. He did it in that 2014-15 NFL playoffs. He went to Denver, to Peyton, and he won the game. So, boy, look out for the Colts in this game. But with that said, I have to pick the Broncos because right now the Colts defense really stinks. And they have injuries. They can't get a pass rush. They can't cover. I can't pick them. But let me tell you right now, after this game, I think they're going to win three straight. So just look out for that. We move on to the Jacksonville Jaguars at the San Diego Chargers. And right now the Chargers are reeling after week one. Keenan Allen out for the season. Ouch. Tyrell Williams, uh, Travis Benjamin. I mean, come on, guys. This isn't good. And the Jaguars, they looked decent last week, even maybe even pretty good. I think they're going to compete. I think they're going to win this football game in San Diego. I'm not sure how close it's going to be. And, man, the Jaguars, they're starting to worry me a little bit. And the Chargers, they're starting to worry me, but not in a good way, in a very bad way. i got to see more from the Chargers, and I don't think we're going to see it in this game. We move on to the Green Bay Packers at the Minnesota Vikings. You know, Viking fans are praising Sean Hill's praises and their team and saying, oh, yeah, see, look, we're going to win the Super Bowl. We're going to beat Green Bay in Week 2. Good luck with that. I'm picking Aaron Rodgers to go to Minnesota and win this game. To me, I don't know if it's going to be very close. I just don't see how you guys are going to put up uh, points on this Packers defense because, boy, this Packers defense is actually pretty freaking good. Their secondary was flying all over the place last week. Demarius Randall, Quentin Rollins, Micah Hyde, ha ha, Clinton Dix. Them boys are running around out there. You guys won't be able to move the football on this team. I'm telling you right now, the Packers win this one pretty easily. And we end with the Monday Night Football game, the Philadelphia Eagles at the Chicago Bears. And man, this is a tough game for me. This is the toughest game this week for me. But at the end of the day, this was my philosophy. The Eagles are an 8-8 eight eight team at best, and that is the absolute best this season. The Bears, whether you hate them or not, they're an 8-8 eight eight team at best as well, okay? You know, it, to me, they're a 10-6 team at best. But if you hate them, you're probably at least going to be able to admit they're 8 in at best. So, you know, with that in mind, even though the Bears had a bad week one and the Eagles had a great week one, you know, we're still talking about teams on the same level, okay? They're very mediocre teams we're talking about here. So the Bears are at home. Pick the Bears, okay? The Eagles' secondary isn't very good. Jay Cutler, Alshon Jeffrey, Kevin White, Eddie Royal, they will find success in this game. They'll put up enough points. And John Fox will scheme against Carson Wentz, throw some things his way that he hasn't seen before, and the Bears will get a tough victory in Chicago on Monday Night Football. But it will be a close game, and it will be an interesting game. So with that said, let's get into my betting locks of the week. I had three guaranteed tees last week. And I went 1-1-1, one, one, and one. but this week I'm expecting to do big things because now I have my feet wet. Okay, the, you know, the season got out underway, you know, I have my feet wet now. So with that in mind, five Garandam betting tees, and let's get into those. So number one, Browns plus 6.5. Again, it's going to be a close divisional matchup. It wouldn't surprise me if the Browns won this game, but I think it's going to be close. I think the Ravens pull it out, but again, it will be close. These games have been uh, close the past couple, three or four years. It will continue to be so. We move on to the Raiders, minus five. Raiders, again, they're going to sit in that pocket. Derek Carr is going to sit in that pocket and throw the football down the field and hurt the Falcons again and again and again and again. They're going to win this game easily to me. Indianapolis Colts, plus six. I like Andrew Luck with this many points. Oh, I like Andrew Luck. The guy competes. The team competes with Andrew Luck. They're always in games. Always give me the Colts, unless they're facing the Patriots. If they're facing the Patriots, I'll bet her off. Uh, but against the Broncos, oh, yeah, the Colts will come. Pete, give me the Colts plus the points. We also have the Packers minus two and a half. Minus two and a half. This is a perfect line. Oh, what a line. Because even if the Packers only win by three, I get my money. Okay, so I like the Packers minus two and a half. And we also have an over under lock today. 
and that is the Jaguars at the Chargers game. Right now, the over-under is at 47. I don't think either one of these teams is going to hit 26. You know, right now, the Jaguars, to me, they're going to win this game, but the Chargers, their offense isn't good enough to put up more than 20 on this Jaguars defense. Jaguars defense has Jalen Ramsey and some other guys that are playing well right now. They're going to slow down the Chargers a lot like how they slowed down the Packers last week. Aaron Rodgers only put up 27. That tells me Phillip Rivers may not even put up 20. So I like the under here. I really, really, really do. So these are my five guarantees of the week. Put your money on it if you want to win some money this weekend. So there you go. Those are my NFL Week 2 picks and predictions. What are yours? I want to know. Comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and most importantly to subscribe. And until next time, this has been the MJ Take on Sports Fan Entertainment, and I'm out. Peace.